Hey guys, Paul here. So today I'm going to be giving Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel ban list uh, wish list predictions, something. We just got a ban list in Master Duel pretty recently, so I don't think that we'll be getting another until at least like, you know, mid-December, probably after the next Duelist Cup. However, I have been playing a lot of this game recently, and so it's gotten me to thinking like, you know, here's what the best decks are, here's how I can maybe see them being hit. Um, the usual preface, of course, for these banless type videos, just my opinion, I'm not on the Master Duel dev team, don't scream too much at me, I can't actually change anything. And um, also, I tried to hit these decks, or propose hits to these decks, in ways that feel in line with how the Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel team would probably approach it, which is to say they tend to go for, like, hitting stuff to two, or kind of going for weird consistency hits, or dancing around the exact problem, but they've gotten a little bit better at it recently, so that's just sort of how I'm interpreting what they may or may not do in this list. Um, also, real quick before we hop in, I'm going to have a master rule up in here, by the way, don't worry. But the main decks we're going to be aiming for are Kashtira, Pirelli, and Labyrinth. Those, to me, are the three most, like, the big terrors on Ranked. But there are also two other decks, which are Dragon Link and Mathmech slash Cyber Pile. So that's basically the five decks that we're going to ultimately aim to tame in this ban list. So... Got Master Duel open, I just put all the cards into a little deck here on the uh, deck builder. And don't worry, I know you're going to see some stuff and be like, what, you want all these cards to be hit? These are just different talking points. That is all. So, first things first, got to talk about Kashtira. Uh, this deck is obviously very good and very annoying, and nobody likes dealing with a Rise Heart because it banishes everything, and they can lock your zones, and these cards are just, they're very good cards. I've got a hot take, though. My personal hot take is that the only Kashtira card that I think actually needs to be hit is Kashtira Fenrir. I think that you could put this card to one, and I would actually be totally okay with everything else that Kashtira does. Now, that isn't to say that, you know, it doesn't need maybe a few extra hits, and I might just be, like, grown... I might have grown too jaded about things, I'm not really sure. But I actually find that Kashtira Rise Heart is not, like, such a bad card to deal with. You can, like take it away with like you can like tribute it take it away lava golem lightning like storm like just raigeki change of heart triple tactics cards there's so many different ways of dealing with a rise heart that i actually don't think that it's all that bad i find kashtira finrir more annoying because it's obviously good in the kashtira deck but also other decks are able to make really really good use of kashtira finrir and it's a little bit deceptive because when people are playing kashtira finrir you can't be sure if they're playing you know the kashtira deck or if they're playing some hybrid thing and like people will use this and then they'll be running Labyrinth or they'll be running Sprite or they'll be running Pirelli and they're just using it as a warm body to link off or they'll use it search as a discard for a Pirelli thing. And I think that much like, you know, those cards like Dino Wrestler Pancratops and stuff, which, you know, the TCG had to like limit that. I think that this is a card that could go to one. It would also slightly hurt the Kashtira deck's consistency, which admittedly is already a little low. Like Kashtira can be quite bricky. So I didn't want to like go for too many hits, but I think that just this alone would be would, would honestly be enough for me. Now, if they wanted to go a uh, slightly further route, I think they could say put Unicorn to two. Like that's what the TCG did with this card. And um, I mean, I wouldn't hate that hit. I don't think that it really has to happen. I think that, like I said, Cash Dira, because they only have one copy of the field spell and Master Rule in general only has like one pot of prosperity and stuff. I find a lot of Cash Dira decks just brick. Um, people, I hear people complain about it a lot. I experience it quite a lot in Ranked. Um, people will just brick with Cash Dira. So I think that if you put Unicorn to two, it might help to tame the uh, birth control sort of strategy that Cash Dira can play, where they just literally spam birth over and over and over, along with like Unicorn and Fenrir, and just kind of like wall out a lot of lower tier decks with that. But I don't have too much of a problem with this. If they wanted to, they could. And I actually do not think that a Rise Heart should be banned. I also think that the fact that they were able to keep, like, Tear Elements, um, <clears throat> Kit Kalos at one means that a Rise Heart could probably just also exist at, like, one. Um, or really, even at three. I don't, I don't have that much of a problem with it at three. Um, the OCG kept this card at three, and they just hit other Cash Dira things. Like, they banned Fenrir and Limited Unicorn. So, you know, I don't know. I, I don't... This card is easier to out than I think it I might have originally anticipated. So I not, would not have a problem with it just staying at three. Another, another problem that like, it going to one causes is that like it would make a Cash Dira mirror match feel a little toxic because then Cash Dira Unicorn can just banish their one Arise Heart and now the other Cash Dira player kind of can't play. So putting this to one would be a little bit tricky for that reason. But yeah, so that's my hits to Cash Dira, which is really just Unicorn, or not Unicorn, but Finrir to one. And if you want to go a little deeper, maybe Unicorn or something to, to, to two. Okay, 
Next hit is Pirelli. So I think Delicious Memory and Sleepy Memory are obviously the two best memory cards. All the Pirelli memories are very good because they all have no hard ones for turns. They can summon a Pirelli monster from the deck, which is like, why Konami? Did you just forget that? But yeah, a um, bunch of spell starters that all do the same thing. Don't want to turn, it's a little crazy. I think I would hit both of these cards to two. And I say I, I think that's probably closer to what the Master Duel dev team would probably do. Uh, we've seen this approach like with Runic before, where they just kind of would, they hit like Runic cards to two that really did not seem like it was enough to do anything. But there is a reason I could see them doing this for Pirelli and it actually making a bit of a difference. So first of all, um, because Pirelli needs these cards to get started, this would cause them to brick a little more often. I know people don't always like that sort of RNG thing where the deck's like power level is still just as high. It's just a little bit more, like less consistent. But I think this would actually change enough stuff. So these cards going to two means that A, this can limit how much attack power an Xyz monster can get because like they can only get two delicious memories as opposed to three. That's really more relevant, I would say, for sleepy memory because it has the whole draw thing. So if there's a max of two of this card in a deck, then they can only draw two cards in the standby phase. And even if they use like the trap card, Pirelli Yeep, Pirelli, Pirelli Leap, whatever you say, um, they wouldn't be able to get like a maximum of six draws instead of a maximum of four. These are little things that I feel could make a difference. Now, it also affects two other Pirelli cards that um, might actually make a big difference too. So the Pirelli monster itself excavates the top three and gets an excavated spell or trap. So by having like fewer net spell and trap cards, it makes this card a little bit harder to use because they would have a total of, um, what is it, like 10 total quick play spells as opposed to 12. And that also affects my friend Pirelli because this makes your opponent pick one card for you to add to your hand, and you have to like pick three. It's A, I just wanna say it's stupid that this card can pick three copies of like the same name, but um, it would mean that like my opponent can't just pick, okay, three sleepy, pick one, because it's always gonna be sleepy memory. So it means that they will have to, you know, put in at least one card between like sleepy and delicious that they don't necessarily want. And that, those little small like consistency hits could add up in the big percentage game that I know the Master Duel devs kind of tend to go for, where it's like, this deck has a 58% win rate and we want to get it down to like 53%. So it would affect like just over thousands and thousands of games. Pirelli would brick a little bit more and maybe that would be like sufficient for them. What do I actually think this deck needs? Um, probably limiting one of these cards would be better, but I think that's a little bit harsh. So I'm okay with these hits. Okay, next one's Labyrinth. I think this deck is really, really obscenely strong. I actually think it's probably like the most annoying thing you can come across right behind Pirelli and Ranked. Um, so Labyrinth is good. There's three different ways I think this deck could be hit, like three separate approaches. The first is that you hit Lady Labyrinth of the Silver Castle to one and or two alongside like Welcome Labyrinth and Big Welcome Labyrinth. These are really, really big engine cards and the deck has the ability to recycle these a lot. So because they can, obviously, you know, like Welcome Labyrinth just keeps setting itself. And because um, Lovely Labyrinth can reset traps, you will just be dealing with overwhelming waves of advantage between all of these different cards showing up. But by hitting a couple of them, like hitting this to two could be really good. I know some decks only really run two, so maybe it would have to go to one to make a dent. But I think if you hit enough of these cards to two, their engine will not have quite as much longevity. So that would be like one way of dealing with the deck. Now, another way of dealing with the deck is, and I know a lot of people want this, Eradicator, Epidemic Virus, and Dimensional Barrier both going to um, banned. Like, just get rid of these cards because they're pretty toxic. Admittedly, I agree. And that way you don't have to actually hit the Labyrinth deck. You can just hit these cards and suddenly, like, things are better. For some reason, Masterville doesn't really like to ban these floodgate blowout cards. I mean, they limited a lot of floodgates. But, um, so I don't know how likely this is to happen. But that would mean that Labyrinth would just be left with their own in-engine stuff, and that would probably be a little bit more tolerable compared to these. And then my third one, um, and this is like kind of my hot take, but I feel like it's like a single card that you can ban, is Ku Clock. I think that if you were to just ban Labyrinth Ku Clock altogether, then the Labyrinth deck becomes infinitely more manageable because now it can't cheat traps anymore. Because that's the whole thing with this card, right? It just cheats unless you activate a normal trap the turn and set. And when you combine that with Stovey Torby and Chen Draglier, it means you can set like trap cards and then use them this turn. And also it combines really well with um, 
Lay Labyrinth because you can set stuff and then they can use that and then use it in their turn. And because uh, this card will let you use those cards even in the draw phase or even the end phase, they can dodge around Triple Tactics cards and it makes Labyrinth just a whole nightmare to play against. So I actually feel like if you just ban Kukwok, then the Labyrinth deck has to function on more fair terms like other decks do. And it also means that Labyrinth can get its next card, Arias the Butler, which is probably due to come out in Master Duel uh, here in the next month or two, which is, in my opinion, a more balanced version of Kuklok. And that would be fine, because it um, only lets you like set something from hand and use it that turn, which is just way better than whatever this and the other furniture is. So I think banning this would be my preferred pick. Don't know if Master Duel would like to do that. I feel like they might just hit some of these to two and call it a day. Okay, those are the three big ones. I also think that uh, Dragon Link, I've, I've said for a long time, I feel like this deck could afford to get hit. Um, Chaos Space, personally, I think could go to one. That would be a really good hit for this deck. I thought about like Quick Launch, I thought about Striker Dragon, but honestly, when I reflect on my um, games against Dragon Link, it just feels like this is the card that is such a strong starter. It sets up so much for them. Um, so I would like say putting this card to one would be would be very fair. Like, as, like, I just think that they deserve it. I don't think that the Bissels need to get hit anymore. They're not really relevant anymore, like, right now. Um, if I had to pick something else, I would say that, really, Chaos Ruler should just get banned. I mean, the TCGs banned this thing. I do not like this card very much. But it's not... It's, like, my second pick. I, I don't know. I don't hate it. I think the Chaos Space going to, like, one would be better. That's not like they're going to ban the card. And then, finally, Math Mechs. Uh... This card is, a, this deck is a really strong, like, random OTK thing where, like, in Master Duel's best of one format, if it goes first, it can, um, basically just make, like, those arrival cybers, you know, huge, large cybers, Link 6 monsters, or if it goes second, it can, like, access code OTK you. I think that Mathemax Circular is the most, like, just loaded card in the game. It sends a monster from deck to grave as a cost to special summon itself, and then it can get spells and traps. So it can like send diameter or whatever. It's really wild how much this card can do. I think putting this card to one, like the TTG did, would be a good call. Um, and still they can search it. They still have like Cyanet Mining and stuff. It doesn't completely break the strategy. But I think that putting it to one would just mean that those search cards now, uh, they're a little bit riskier. And if they get ashed, then it actually makes like a real dent in the deck's strategy. So um, yeah. Those are basically my hits. Uh, I'm sure that there are others that I, you could probably think of, so I'd love to hear what you guys have to say in the comments. But yeah, I've just been playing a lot of Master Duel lately. Um, I'll probably be in Master Rank again in this season pretty soon. I was last season. I'm in Diamond right now. So I've got some playing to do. But yeah, let me know what you guys thought of my hits, if they seem reasonable or not, what you would do instead, or if I'm just complaining and there's not actually any problems whatsoever. It'll probably be a while before I get this ban list anyway, so yeah. All right, that's going to be it. See you guys in the next one. Fast turn.